Chapter 15 Reference Files In the past, designers were often asked to use an existing drawing as a backdrop as they created new drawings. They taped the existing drawing down onto the drafting table and then taped a clean sheet or a new design file on top of the existing drawing. The procedure of working over a backdrop is still used today with automated techniques. In MicroStation, we call them reference files. You've already seen the reference file dialog a number of times, so I'm going to go over this in detail in this chapter. But essentially, a reference file is a model from another file, or from the same file, referenced into the active model that you're working in. You can see the elements in that model, you can snap to them, and you can draw relative to them. You can refer to them. The reference file dialog can be accessed from the primary tools toolbar, as you're aware of, also from the file menu, references. You can, of course, get a quick drop-down dialog from hitting the down arrow or open up the reference dialog itself. This is a list of the files that are currently referenced into this file. And you know that because we have turned them on and off throughout this course. To attach a reference file, you select the Attach Reference button. You select your reference file, and then you get this dialog here to set some settings before you attach it. For the most part, if you're selecting the default model of whatever reference you're, you're going with, you can just go ahead and hit OK and you're done. But let's take a look at these settings. You can select what model to attach. So if you're setting up a motif file or a clipboarders file to create uh, some plan sheets at a 40 scale, and you know it's going to be a 40 scale, you can attach the Align RD 40 model so that you're sure that your tick marks and annotation is at the correct scale. Typically, you leave these settings alone. You want all of your coincident, coincident world settings to be correct. The detail scale in this is 1 to 40. The scale master reference is 1 to 1. That's the actual scale of the reference file. Nesting is whether or not you can see references that are referenced into the file that you're referencing into your file. Follow? So if I had files referenced into this Align 40 and I had no nesting set, all I would see is the Align 40. If I had references referenced into it and set it for live nesting, I would see those references. If I selected Copy Attachments, it would actually copy all of those references into my active file. And I'll demonstrate this a little later. Here are your initial toggles for Display, Snap, and Locate. Those correspond to these columns here. Display is whether or not the reference is on. You can switch it on and off. Snap is whether or not you can snap to elements in that reference file. And locate is whether or not you can select or highlight elements in that reference file. You cannot edit a reference file while you're in the active file. I mean, there is a method for doing that, but I don't recommend it. To detach a reference file, you simply right click and select detach, or you can hit the detach button. I don't need the second alignment referenced in, so I'm going to detach it. But let's look at that context menu. You have detach, reload. Reload happens when uh, it's a reference file is changed and you want to reload it so you can see what changes might have happened. Exchange actually takes you to that reference file. It closes your active file and opens up the reference file. Open in a new session opens the reference file in a new session of MicroStation. Activate activates it. Move is much like, these are the move, copy, scale, rotate are up here as well. Move, copy, scale, rotate. They work just like the modify, manipulate tools do for elements, except these are specifically for references. You can move the reference, you can copy the reference, you can scale the reference, and you can rotate the reference. For the most part, you'd be doing that if you were creating a detail. Your references should automatically line up with each other if they have the same global origin. But if you're creating a detail in a sheet, you would scale the reference up, move it over, and you know, set it up in the corner of your sheet for a detail. Merge into master merges all the elements in that reference file into the active file. Clip boundary and clip mask will demonstrate that's for making sheets. You can uh, fence a certain area of a reference file and cause that area to be either masked out or clipped. And then here you can access the settings dialog. The settings dialog looks a lot like the dialog we saw when we first attached the reference file, and it has a lot of those settings right there. As I mentioned before, reload, move,
copy, rotate, scale are all right here, including mirror, which I did not see on the context menu. So that's basically the reference file dialog, and you've seen enough of reference files to have a general idea of what they're about. So I'm going to dive in and step you through the last exercise in this course, and I'm going to show you how to manually clip a plan sheet. You wouldn't normally manually clip, clip a plan sheet. You would do this through some automated process like Geopack sheet composition or something to that effect. But I think it's important to understand how the, the sheets are put together and that they can be manually clipped. And that gives you a better understanding of both how reference files work as well as how sheets work. The first thing I'm going to do is launch the create file program. I'm going to create a motif file. It's going to open up that file. And I'm going to set it at a scale of 50 because that's the scale I'm going to clip my sheet at. All right, we are currently in the motif file. The next thing I'm going to do is open up the reference dialog. I access that from the primary toolbar and I'm going to hit the attach reference button. I'm going to attach the align RD, the DSGN RD, and the text RD. It'll actually bring the dialog up sequentially. So the first thing it's asking me about is the align RD. I'm going to select the 50 scale because I know there's elements in there. Then the design RD, I know that the elements in there are correct. That's the, the correct model. And I know that text RD only has one model, so I'm going to select the default model as well. Let's do a fit view. You can start to see our drawing coming together. But I want to reference more stuff in. Let's go to the survey folder and reference in both topo files. And we can select the default model and the defaults on both of those. All right. And let's also go to the utils folder and select the existing utilities. And we can select the default model on that one. OK, we can dismiss that references dialog and let's zoom in and see what everything looks like. It looks like everything's at the right scale. Our line style scale is propagated correctly. And let's find a major intersection to, to use. I think I'm, I see this one right here. Let's zoom in. I'm going to roll my wheel mouse until I zoom into this intersection right here. And this is not the angle that I want to clip my sheet at. So I'm going to select my rotate view. I'm going to snap to that tick mark and snap to that tick mark. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, get a, a good idea of what's going on here. OK, so this is my motif file. This has all of my files referenced into it. This can be used for clipping sheets. And ultimately, when you have a plan sheet, you may have a plan sheet that has you know, all the references referenced directly into the plan sheet. A motif file has all the references referenced into it. There's actually no elements in the motif file just reference files and that would get referenced by itself into the plan sheet with live nesting. So the next step I'm going to do is open up the create file program again and select plan sheet which is a plan RD and I'm going to create plan RD 999 because I know I've got some plan sheets in there already and I'm just going to create my own extra plan sheet. I'm going to set my plot scale to 50 I'm going to make sure that my drawing scale has also been set to 50. And I'm going to reference in just the motif file. OK. But wait, I don't see anything. Why don't I see anything? Because I have to activate live nesting. I can do that by selecting settings, nesting, live nesting or I can simply do that right there and then do a fit view again and we see all of the reference files that are referenced into our motif file are referenced in to this file. 
Okay, so let's find that intersection that we were thinking about clipping. I think this is it right here. And let's rotate the file. Snap to that tick mark and snap to that one. That is a good angle. And then we're going to place a sheet border. I'm selecting the Actions menu, Sheets, Plan Sheet. That's going to attach a very tiny plan sheet to the end of my cursor. Well, that's no good. Let's change the scale because it is 50. That is much better. So that's the border, but what about all this stuff? I can't print with all this extra stuff on either side of the sheet. That's no good. So what we do is we get the fence, and I'm holding down Control and Shift so I can snap my fence tool to this corner, because fences are weird like that. And snap to that corner. I've created a fence. Now if I go back to the References dialog, I can right-click on the Motif file and select Clip Boundary. And now you see I have clipped a sheet with nested references. Now the great thing about nested references is you can go back into the Motif file, turn levels off and on, and change stuff, and it all affects all of your plan sheets. If I had multiple plan sheets referencing the Motif, uh, they would all change rather than having to go and turn levels on and off in every single plan sheet. So what about that clip mask thing? Well say I've decided that I don't want this portion of my design to show up or I want to put a detail there. I want to put a box with a, a legend or a detail or something. I can come back here, right click and select clip mask, enter a data point, and it masks out that portion of the design. Now something's gone terribly wrong in our motif file. Our line styles aren't showing up correctly and something weird's going on. Actually my line styles are showing up great. But sometimes there are line style issues and it's because line styles get embedded into the motif file. I don't know exactly why this happens so often, but it does. So I want to show you all a trick to use that merge into master or the copy attachments to fix issues with motif files. Do a fit view and see all of those references there. In the cases where we end up with line styles not showing up correctly because of embedded line styles and you don't need to know exactly what that means, just that it happens, what I recommend doing is saving a copy of the motif file. We'll call this back. and then go into your working directory and get rid of the original motif file and launch the create file tool. Let's create a brand new motif file. This is a brand new motif file created from a brand new seed file. Okay, And then we're going to say close and we're going to reference in the old motif file. Alright, fair enough, there it is. I'm going to right click and select settings and set the nesting to copy attachments. And now it's copied all the attachments from the original. Now say there were some elements in the motif file that I wanted to keep. If there were. There wouldn't be, but if there were I wanted to keep them. I could go to the context menu and select merge into master and then enter a data point say OK and now that file has been merged in as well so that is all the functionality of reference files and that is the end of the F.Bentley CAD Essentials training course